One HD. So, yeah, performing in front of 6,000, strictly as you've never seen it before, tonight at 6.55. One final time now on BBC One, Tim Gudgeon reads your final score. Hello, welcome to Final Score. You'll get all the goals as they go in as we approach the final whistle in the company of Garth Crooks and Martin Keown. Give you all the latest scores in just a moment, but there was one early game. It happened at Carrow Road. Norwich took the lead through Steve Morrison, but that man, Robin Van Persie, scored twice, once in the first half, once in the second half, to give Arsene Wenger's men the win, and it takes them up to sixth as things stand in the Barclays Premier League. Norwich one, Arsenal two. And this is what is happening in the Barclays Premier League at the moment. Wolves took the lead at Goodison through a penalty, but Phil Jagielka equalised uh, for David Moyes' men. Been two penalties at the Etihad Stadium. Sergio Aguero got the second, Mario Balotelli the first, Michael Richards the other scorer as well. It's a fantastic game at the Britannia. Stoke 2, QPR 3, 2 for Heide Helgeson there. Sunderland and Fulham are goalless at the moment, the only Premier League game that doesn't have a goal. Jerome Thomas and Shane Long have got the goals for Roy Hodgson's men against Bolton. Bolton's goal came from a penalty and it's an astonishing game at the DW. Uh, there is a lot of debate at the moment about Blackburn Rovers' equaliser. We'll give you more details of that in a moment. Blackburn are down to ten men as well with David Dunn being sent off. OK, let's start at the Etihad Stadium, where in the last few minutes, Richard Askham, Manchester City have gone 3-0 up on Newcastle. Yes, chap, as they have, Sergio Aguero has uh, scored from the spot a few minutes ago, his 11th of the season, Micah Richards, the man fouled in the box. It was always going to be tough for Newcastle to preserve their unbeaten record here at the Etihad today against an also unbeaten City side full of confidence and even without their playmaker David Silva who is on now but was left on the bench for an hour they've created countless opportunities the home side Sergio Aguero's gone on a couple of thrilling Maisie runs this half Tim Krul's been really tested in the Newcastle goal Newcastle have had opportunities Chappers but crucially haven't taken them and in the first 45 they were really stubborn in defence and frustrated City but since the home side found the breakthrough first through Mario Balotelli's spot kick quickly followed by Micah Richards' strike just before the break. It's been City on the front foot as Sergio Aguero goes off to uh, an ovation from the City fans and Adam Johnson comes on. West Ham have the best away record in the Championship. They're back level at the Rico through Carlton Cole. Big centre-half Mark Hudson has extended Cardiff's lead at the Medeski. Reading nil, Cardiff two. And Scott McDonald's second of the afternoon. He's third in two games. Means Middlesbrough are now 2-1 up on Ian Holloway's Blackpool. Straight to the DW Stadium where, James Mason, you have seen incident after incident after incident. Yeah, it's been an absolute cracker. Wigan two, Blackburn two. With both sides looking for their only second win of the season prior to kickoff mark, it's no surprise this has been a full blooded encounter. Four goals, a sending off, and of course some controversy as well. We'll start at the very beginning. Blackburn striking inside 90 seconds. Yakubu taking advantage of some poor defending to score before Wigan pretty much. Wigan nearly, in fact should have taken the league. Hugo Rodiega has just seen Paul Robinson, who's making his 350th appearance, save from point-blank range. The DW applauding Robinson. What a save. I think I'd got to say in Blackburn had taken the lead before Wigan came back at full strength. Jordi Gomez equalising and a free header from Gary Caldwell put them in front at half-time. But things went from bad to worse for Blackburn in the second half. David Dunn seeing a, a second bookable offence, meaning he was sent off a red card and all the odds were stacked against them, but their luck changed 
in the controversial uh, way I mentioned earlier on. Yakub and, and more Yakubu and Morton Gams Pedersen creating a chance for Junior Hoylet from a from a corner, but Yakubu didn't touch the ball. Morton Gams Pedersen ran on, crossed it, and Hoylet scored from about a yard out. Andre Mariner giving the goal. It probably shouldn't have been. In fact, it shouldn't have been. But it's Wigan two, Blackburn two, with 13 minutes to go. An astonishing, astonishing incident. Uh, Andrew James has an awful lot to fit in as well in his report. Five goals at the Britannia already this afternoon. Yes, indeed. It's uh, now 11 in three games conceded by Stoke City, Mark. Almost unthinkable and heading for a fourth consecutive Premier League uh, defeat. It was uh, Stoke who went in front through uh, Jonathan Walters, uh, but then uh, QPR pulled one back through Helgerson for 1-1. Luke Young then added a second just before half-time, 2-1 QPR at the break, and that after Stoke had missed a couple of really good chances for Peter Crouch. Uh, Helgerson then made it 3-1. Uh, the Stoke fans far from happy at that point. Indeed, Helgerson could have had a hat-trick, could have been 4-1 QPR, but Helgerson ruled offside as he had a close-range tap-in. And then Ryan Shawcross just managing to head in a, head in a, a header at the far post for Stoke City to pull it back to 2-3. Stoke have sent on Ricardo Fuller, his first action in seven months since breaking his leg against Villa back in April. It's set up for a storming finish, but at the moment QPR seem to have weathered the storm market. Stoke 2, QPR 3. Two this afternoon for Charlie McDonald, five in total for the season. They're 3-1 up at Colchester, our MK Dons. You aren't misreading things. It is Airdrie United 11, Gala Ferry D nil in the Scottish Cup. Normally around this stage on video printer, it starts getting spelt out in letters, doesn't it? I think when you get to about 10 or 11. And Swindon have now equalised Palo de Canio side level against AFC Wimbledon through Alan Connell, 17 minutes to go there. To the Hawthorns next, where it's very nicely poised for Ivan Gaskell. Yes, West Brom on the verge of their first Premier League win in seven attempts against Bolton and on the basis of this second half display, they'll deserve it too. The first half rather more evenly balanced, a goal apiece in the space of three minutes midway through. Jerome Thomas rounding the keeper, then Ivan Klasnich squaring from the spot. But since the break, West Brom have rather taken control. No surprise when Shane Long marked his return to the side by glancing Nicky Shorey's cross past Jaska Leinen. Petrov and Ngog have just come on for Bolton, but frankly, the uh, dynamic duo of Batman and Robin would struggle to turn this one round. It's going West Brom's way, I fancy. 11 to go, 2-1. John Joe Shelby on loan from Liverpool at Blackpool has equalised at the Riverside. Middlesbrough 2, Blackpool 2. It's all square at Goodison as well. Nas Premji. Everton 1, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1. Stephen Hunt with a penalty to give Wolves the lead early in the first half. It wasn't deserved. It was a soft penalty as well. David Edwards, the man, fouled. Hunt made no mistake from 12 yards out. Phil Jagielka with a bullet header to level just before the break. And in the second period, Mark, it's been all Everton moments ago. They had a super opportunity. Opportunity, lovely interpassing, and it was Tim Cahill two yards out, goal gaping. He had to score. Stephen Ward somehow blocked it. I still don't know how he missed that one a couple of yards out. Everton have been on top and probably deserve this, but at the moment they're being frustrated by a dogged Wolves defence. They have been uh, basically sitting back and trying to take what they've got here. Everton won, Wolves won. The only other footnote Richard Stearman going off for Wolves with a serious looking arm injury. Thank you very much. Just gone through on the video printer. West Ham now in the lead at Coventry through Frederick Pickion. They've turned it round. A goal down to two on up. Scunthorpe have only won one of their last six in the league. It doesn't look like they're going to win today at Glanford Park. Hartlepool increased their lead through Anthony Sweeney and Accrington back on level terms against Macclesfield through Jaden Stockley. Back to the Premier League. Only one game without a goal. Who's looking more likely to break the deadlock? Sunderland or Fulham? Steve Sutton. Well, at the moment, Mark, neither. There are some nil-nils, of course, where there's not an awful lot to talk about. This isn't one of them. Sunderland uh, hit the bar twice in the first half. A Kieran Richardson header and a Jack Colbeck at drive, finding Wood instead of net. Fulham not without their chances as well. It's hard for either side to break each other down. That's why it's nil-nil. <laughs> Great afternoon, isn't it, in the Premier League, Martin? Oh, unbelievable. I mean, we've seen an incident there at Wigan. And they take a penalty, they take a corner, and there's no way he's actually even touched the ball. Yakuba puts the ball down, he walks away from it. Next thing, Pedersen runs up to the ball, takes two touches. We all assume that Yakuba must have actually rolled the ball into play. He hasn't done any of the sort, and they tuck it into the back of the net. And that goal is really going to cause problems because probably keeping Steve Keane in a job tonight, 2 1 down, down to 10 men, now they're 2 2 hanging on a little bit. But I can't believe the officials allowed that goal to stand. You've got to see it though, because 
Yakubu motions the foot as though he's, he's touched the ball. Mm. And Pedersen assumes the same. So then Martin takes up the story. He takes it, almost rolls it, takes the ball into the 18-yard box mm. before Hoylett puts it in the back of the net. But the last thing you see is Yakubu's hand on the ball. On the ball so, there's isn't such it? a delay, though, between both Yakubu apparently playing the ball and then Pedersen taking the corner. And he takes two touches before Wigan have actually realised that the corner's been taken. And it's played across the box and it's put in. And we're all assuming the referee must have seen him take it, but he, he hasn't. He's guessing. And really, Pedersen has conned everybody because it simply wasn't a corner. <laughs> uh, Sheffield Wednesday have taken the lead at Tramir. Ryan Lowe, the former Berry striker, has put them ahead there. Torquay, 39 years since they've beaten Plymouth. 3 1 up. Plymouth have got one back through Will Atkinson. Nick Powell has put crew level at Morecambe. Morecambe won crew one. And Jimmy Kebe has meant it's going to be a humding in the last 30 minutes or so at the Medeski. Reading one card if two in a repeat of last year's playoff semi final. Finals. Uh, one of the other Premier League games, let's just talk Manchester City, Newcastle. City 3 0 up, a couple of penalties. The highlight being Mario Balotelli's celebration. Well, there's been two highlights in this game for me. The first one is Balotelli's just sheer cheek. Um, it, it's a pressure moment, it's the first goal. He sticks it away with, I mean, real arrogance and then shows his arrogance to the crowd and, and does almost Canton esque uh, sort of walk away. Uh, and then um, we see Mika Richards. I mean, he's really ra raging down that uh, right-hand side, gets into the box and finishes like a striker. Mm. Those two, for me, were outstanding today, mm. Balotelli and Richards. Richards can't even get into the England squad, can he? Man, City, Man City can buy any right-back they want in the world, but they don't want anybody else but Mika yeah. Richards. But England don't need him, apparently. Let's drop into the Championship. Leaders Southampton at home to Brighton and a very, very unhappy Brighton. Tony Husband. Yes, I think they'll be wanting to uh, look back at the highlights of this one at the end of the game, Mark. A forgettable first half between these South Coast rivals. A dramatic second half, which has seen one red card, two penalties, a hat-trick for Southampton's Ricky Lambert. Two of those from the spot. Both the penalties, apparently questionable decisions from referee Peter Walton. The first saw Maurizio Tarico, the Brighton assistant, and right back today sent off for arguing. Uh, Lambert, having headed the first just after half-time, put the penalties away well, and Southampton could have had more since they've been playing ten men. Southampton now on course for an 18th consecutive home league win. They're 3-0 up. In League 2, Aldershot had gone back nine minutes from time against Gillingham. Scott Davis with that goal. And we are going to return now on final score to Goodison Park, where Naz Premji, the referee, has pointed to the spot. He certainly has. I think it's for Stephen Ward's push on Louis Saha. Uh, he certainly put... He was very deliberate with the uh, uh, giving of the penalty. No hesitation at all. And it, I think it's Stephen Ward. We just missed the replay there, but Everton have a chance to take the lead here. And uh, it'll be uh, Leighton Baines who is lining up the spot kick. Leighton Baines shoots and scores. Bottom left corner, and Everton take a deserved lead. And the penalty, again, we've had a debatable one in the first half. I'm not sure this was debatable because Stephen Ward definitely pushed one of the Everton players in the back. The referee spotted it, no hesitation, and Everton now have a deserved 2-1 lead. It's Everton 2, Wolves 1. Northampton 1, Shrewsbury 4, Marvin Morgan, Shrewsbury's top scorer with his uh, fifth in the league, his eighth of the season, means they're leading at Northampton by four goals to one. Northampton without a manager, of course, after Gary Johnson left by mutual consent on Monday. To the Rico Arena next, where West Ham have turned it round. Mark Bishop. They certainly have. Coventry City 1, West Ham United 2, a tale of two substitutes this chappers. It keeps Big Sam's high flyers. Uh, West Ham on the coattails of leader Southampton. It's been a thoroughly pulsating game. Cotton Cole, he replaced John Carew at the start of the second half. Allardyce going for 4-4-2. Uh, it was Cole who cancelled out Clive Platt's opener for Coventry. And then the impish uh, Frederick Pickion managed somehow to squeeze the ball past Murphy at the far post, putting 6,313 travelling West Ham supporters into dreamland. Cruel, cruel injustice for Coventry. They've dominated large chunks of this game. Terrific save from Green uh, denied uh, Christie in the first half. But it looked as if uh, West Ham are going to get all three points. Coventry 1, West Ham United 2. It's ebbed and flowed at the city ground all afternoon and now there's been another goal. What's the state of play, Alan Biggs? It's Nottingham Forest 2, Ipswich Town 2 and for the second time a tenacious Forest 
under the management of Steve Cottrell have come back to level. This was a fine flicked header from Joel Lynch, uh, one of the more unlikely scorers to make it 2-2. After another unlikely scorer had twice put Ipswich in front, three years it's been since Danny Collins, big centre-half, last scored a goal. He's got two today, both headers, uh, a glancing one to put Ipswich ahead. Forrest came back with Robbie Findlay equalising, then Danny Collins in the second half with a diving header to restore Ipswich's lead. And now another header from Lynch, all square, 2-2 at the City Ground. I said we'd get the score written in letters, didn't I, on the video printer? We have Edry United 11, Gala Ferry Dean nil in the Scottish Cup and also in that competition. Peterhead, next to bottom of Division 3, have put out the non-league side Inveruri Loco Works by four goals to two. Back to the Championship, back to the Riverside, where, like at the Forest, it's also 2-2. Paul Addison. It is indeed, Mark, and it's a great game of football as well. Middlesbrough utterly dominated the opening stages of the second half and they went into the lead deservedly through Scott McDonald's second of the game for him and fourth of the season, a finish from close range from a Reese Williams uh, cross from the right, but credit to Blackpool in the face of all that Middlesbrough pressure. They went down the other end and they equalised much to Borough's indecision in the penalty area and John Joe Shelby was there to smash the ball in for his sixth of the season. It could be anybody's game here, it's to all. They've gained one point out of 21 at Preston and they're behind to Rochdale and Berry have e extended their lead at Walsall. We said that Blackburn's equaliser was controversial. It might not matter now. James Mason. Yes, unbelievably, number seven, Albert Crusat, one of the tiniest players in the Premier League, has come on and scored for Wigan at the death. It's been a pulsating game, Chappers, but Albert Crusat looks like he may have ended eight games without a win for Wigan Athletic. They lead 3-2. Garth, I know you're apoplectic about that goal, so I will get your thoughts in a moment after we go to Manchester City, where another goal has gone in. Richard Askin. Yes, but not in the end that perhaps most of the crowd here expected, uh, Chappers. It's now City 3, Newcastle 1. A bit of a mix-up in the City defence. Denver Barr got to the ball ahead of Joe Hart. The ball sort of ran free and then Dan Gosling poked the ball home, which is probably uh, almost certainly a consolation for Newcastle. City 3, Newcastle 1. Right, why are you apoplectic? The, the substitute you calm down? Crusat. <laughs> Crusat. Crusat comes on, fine. Quite diminutive, lively. Breaks into the edge of the box, toe pokes, yeah. toe pokes yeah. the ball towards goal. It's practically in the centre of the goal, and it goes Underneath. through Robinson's body. Mm. What does Steve Keane have to do? He's had a man sent off. He's down to ten men. They come back two-two. Okay, in controversial circumstances. Well, it can't be less. Than, it's less than five minutes mm. to go, and they're still. It's extraordinary. It's a goal. You've got to see this game I, to believe it. He's toe punked it, and he's caught Robinson out. But he should still save it, without doubt. Uh, let's go into the championship, shall we? Next to the Medeski. Mark Webber watching uh, Reading against Cardiff. They've got one back at the home side. Do they look like getting a second? Well, indeed, Reading have bossed this game in terms of possession, but it's one of life's unexplained mysteries like UFOs and why Garth Crook still isn't playing for England as to why they found themselves 2-0 down in this game just now when a Jimmy Kebby had a heralded a possible comeback. Cardiff's opener, tale of the unexpected itself. Peter Whittingham, 35 yards out apologetically welling the ball and it managed to land in the back of the net 1-0 the second was well taken a tap in by Mark Hudson but all of this has been sandwiched by persistent peppering of the Cardiff goal by the rampant Reading and a number of superb saves have stopped them from getting an earlier one they've been very unlucky Reading wouldn't get them to pick my lottery numbers tonight but maybe the comeback's on Reading 1 Cardiff City 2 MK Dons have won their last three looks like they're going to make it four in a row they're 4-1 up at Colchester Stephen Gleeson adding to a couple from Charlie McDonald this afternoon. Now, the early kick-off in the Championship, so Leeds travel to Burnley. Here are the goals for you. The commentary is from Gar Mowbray. As Moldo clears. Stannis last touch, and now Bartley to Easton. McCann. Ooh, that's a late challenge. The advantage is with Burnley, though. The play will go on. It was Connolly on Tracy. That's a run, wonderful cross, and Burnley have the lead, Rodriguez has scored. An absolute peach of a delivery from Kieran Trippier, met by the hand of j -Rod. Nunez. 
Clayton to White. Here's Sam. Over Becchio, Snodgrass in! Snodgrass equalises! Right in front of the Leeds United fans. Played in by Snodgrass. It's come for Nunez. Did well to chip that in. Here's Snodgrass. Oh. And Snodgrass has scored for Leeds. He's got two. They've got two. And they might be going back across the Pennines with all three points. And the lunchtime game in the SPL was between Inverness, Caledonian Thistle and Celtic. Finished 2-0 to Neil Lennon's side. Anthony Stokes got both the goals. Inverness also reduced to 10 men during that game. Confirmation there. Anthony Stokes with both of those. Tansy sent off eight minutes before half-time. And that looks like a very decent revolt, result for Celtic, given... What has happened to Rangers this afternoon? Brian McLaughlin. Yes, Martin, it's finished. Rangers nil, St Johnston nil. A lacklustre performance from Rangers, but all the credit must go to St Johnston this afternoon under new boss Steve Lomas. They were quite magnificent throughout the 90 minutes. They also had the two best chances of the game. Both fell to Murray Davidson, but Alan McGregor in the Rangers goal saved well on both occasions. Rangers' best effort came from Nikita Jelovic, but Enkelman in the Saints goal saved with ease. Marcus Haber almost gave Saints a winner with the last kick of the ball but was narrowly over the crossbar Rangers still lead at the top of the table but now only by 10 points full time at Ibrox Rangers nil St Johnston nil nine for the season for Leon Clark but Chessfield are well beaten at Oldham this afternoon same for Walsall well beaten at home by Berry in League One and also there you can see third place Motherwell in the SPL have also won details of that victory at Pataudry from Ian Turner a sixth away win of the season for Motherwell and they keep the pe pressure right on Celtic Craig Brown will point to the fight displayed by his Aberdeen side but there's no denying Motherwell, his former team played the better football, Michael Higdon and Scott Vernon exchanged headed goals inside the first ten minutes but it was left to Omar Daly to score what proved to be the winner early in the second half the Dons remain joint and bottom, they lose 1-2 Late, late goal for Nottingham Forest. It looks like they've beaten Ipswich. Marcus Tugguy right on 90 minutes. Nottingham Forest 3, Ipswich 2. The final whistles are going in our Premier League 3 o'clock game, starting at the Etihad Stadium. Another three points for Manchester City. Richard Askin. Yes, Manchester City 3, Newcastle 1. Newcastle knew it would be difficult to preserve their unbeaten record at Fortress Etihad, and so it proved. The home side remained unbeaten and have now scored 42 goals in just 12 matches. Two penalties, Mario Balotelli's opener and Sergio Aguero's 11th of the season shouldn't muddy the waters. This was another comprehensive and powerful performance from the home side, epitomised by Michael Richards as second, the bullocking fullback powering in left-footed after a Newcastle mistake. With David Silver on the bench for an hour, this wasn't City at their most fluent. Indeed, Joe Hart was forced into excellent saves to deny Ben Arthur and Denver Barr before Dan Gosling forced in a consolation late on. But Newcastle, although they defended stubbornly, fell short against the City side, content to leave out their most influential player for the bulk of the game. Six for Michael Flynn for the season, but Bradford have probably left it too late to beat Rotherham. Bradford two, Rotherham three, and as you can see, the final whistle has gone at the Hawthorns. Ivan Gasper. Yes, at half-time, this one was really difficult to predict. Too close to call. West Brom and Bolton locked at one all. Chances at either end. Thomas had uh, skipped around the goalkeeper to put West Brom ahead. And at the other end, three minutes later, Klasnich had clinically finished from the spot. But the second half was a, an utterly different story. West Brom went at it from the start. Bolton sort of caved in. And it was to no-one's great surprise when Shane Long popped up, announced his return to the West Brom side after injury, and scored what proved to be the winner. And deservedly so, West Brom win it 2-1. To pen! Unbelievable! There is a penalty, a penalty <laughs> at the DW Stadium, and Paul Robinson is involved. Cut his head as well. You might be surprised by this, James Mason. Oh, Goodness me, Chappers, where do I start? The game started with me having to tear my notes up because Yakubu scored within 90 seconds. Now at the death, Andre Mariner has given a penalty to Blackburn Rovers, and I mean this is time added on, the last kick of the game perhaps. 
Paul Robinson has gone up for a corner. He's tried to head the ball that David Jones, the Wigan defender, has raised his boot to, and probably every right to, but because Paul Robinson stooped down to head it, the boot's hit his head. Andre Mariner's pointed to the spot. Paul Robinson is going to now take treatment. You're probably going to have to come back to me because I think Andre Mariner is going to have to sort this mess out. But just to clarify, Paul Robinson is receiving treatment. He has won a penalty for Blackburn Rovers who trail 3-2 in this bottom of the basement clash in what has been an enthralling game. So I don't mind if you come back to me. The, uh, the referee is sorting things out. I'll be back with you very shortly, chappers. OK, whilst we wait for that penalty, look at the DW. Are Blackburn going to score it? James? Yakubu has got his hands on his hips. The number 24 for Blackburn Rovers. He scored inside the first 90 seconds of this game. He could equalise inside, well, what must be the last kick of the game. He strikes and scores and race the Blackburn fans race towards the Blackburn Rovers fans. Ali al Habsi can't believe it, the DW can't believe it. It's half empty because the Wigan fans think they've got the three points, but Blackburn looked to have rescued a point and they could well have rescued Steve Keane's job. What a game, it's 3-3. Surely that's going to be the last kick of the game, Chappers. Words fail me for once, it's 3-3. They've, they've uh, failed Garth as well, so lots of good things have come out of that penalty. Uh, Naz Premji at Goodison. Everton have got the three points. They certainly have. It's a deserved victory for Everton. Final score here, Everton 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1. David Moyes' side with that deserved win. They did it the hard way, though, coming from a goal down. Stephen Hunt it was that gave Mick McCarthy's team the lead from the penalty spot. It was after David Edwards was simply touched by Marouin Fellaini, a really soft penalty. Phil Jagielka then headed in the leveller, uh, a really lovely delivery from a Leighton Baines free kick, and Jagielka made no mistake, burying the header uh, just before the break. The second period... It was all about Everton. They surged forward, and Tim Cahill missed a glorious opportunity from two yards out. Only he'll know how he missed. It was Stephen Ward who blocked on the line. They kept chipping away, and seven minutes from time, Stephen Ward pushed Louis Sa in the box. The referee pointed to the spot for a second occasion, and this time Baines scored his second of the season, sending Hennessy the wrong way. Uh, Stephen Fletcher came on late for Wolves. Richard Stearman suffered a really nasty the injury, potential broken arm for Stearman. Uh, those are the footnotes of this game. Everton back to winning ways. Everton 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1. Back to the DW Stadium. The final whistle has gone. There are two, well, <laughs> I, I was going to say relieve managers, but I was going to say they probably don't know what's gone on. Uh, Steve Keane and Roberto Martins. James Mason. Yeah, Steve Keane is punching the air in delight and defiance, I suppose as he's seen his side um, take a point in what has been an enthralling game. Wigan 3, Blackburn 3. Wigan thought they'd won it with an Albert Crusat goal with only two minutes to go, but Blackburn scored in amazing fashion. Uh, a penalty from Yakubu after Paul Robinson came up for uh, the, well to try and score with the last kick of the game. Um, Yakubu started the scoring 1-0. Gomez and Caldwell put Wigan 2 and up at half-time. Hoylett scored from a very controversial goal, a corner that, that wasn't properly taken, made it 2-2. Crusat scored at the death, as I said, and Paul Robinson winning that penalty for Yakubu to make it 3-3 sums up what has been an amazing East Lancashire derby. They had a cracker at the Britannia as well. Stoke 2, QPR 3, Andrew James. We did indeed, Mark, and uh, Stoke City now looking at something of a crisis in comparative terms with this, their fourth consecutive Premier League defeat and their third uh, defeat uh, in three at the Britannia Stadium in all competitions. They went ahead through Walter's goal and looked comfortable at 1-0, but they missed two good Peter Crouch chances, and before they knew it, QPR were 2-1 up through Helgeson and Luke Young. Helgeson added a second soon into the second half for 3-1, and he could have got his hat-trick but was denied by an offside flag. Ryan Shawcross pulled one back as Stoke sent on Ricardo Fuller for his first action in almost seven months. But despite some horrendous moments for referee Mike Jones and a sending off for one of the Stoke City technical staff from the bench, it finished Stoke City 2, QPR 3.
And it was a game not without Coventry at St Mary's in the Championship, but the leaders march on. Tony Husband. Yes, Southampton's 18th consecutive home league win. Brighton ending the game with 10 men. A match perhaps settled in 15 second half minutes, in which Ricky Lambert headed an opener, then converted the first of two penalties, which saw Maurizio Tarico red carded for arguing for Brighton. Replay suggesting Jose Font was outside the box when brought down by Lewis Dunk. Lambert later made it 3 0 from the spot after Calderon tangled with him. Him. Again, it was disputed, but by then you sensed there was only going to be one winner here. Southampton staying top with a 3-0 win over their local rivals, Brighton. But West Ham stay hot on their heels, don't they, Mark Bishop? They certainly do, Mark. Coventry 1, West Ham 2. Two second-half substitutions by Big Sam. Two goals for West Ham after Coventry punching way above their weight against the side with the best away record in the championship. Totally dominated the first half with Clive Platt's opening goal. Second half, all West Ham. Colton Cole replacing Carew at the start of the second half. He put the visitors back into the game in front of over 6,000 travelling West Ham fans. And then Frederick Pickion somehow managed to squeeze the ball past Murphy at the far post. West Ham then threatening to run riot. Collison managed to balloon over from six yards. Pickion and uh, Cole again with great chances. But it didn't matter. The West Ham bandwagon rolls on. Coventry 1, West Ham United 2. OK. Time now for the classified results and it's both a special and sad set of classifieds because for the final time they'll be read by Tim Gudgeon. Tim has been with BBC Sport since 1965 and today is his last day. So for one more time here on BBC One, Tim, it's all yours. Thank you, Mark. Or should I call you Chappers? Well, I will if you call me Gudgeons. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. And in the Barclays Premier League, Everton 2, Wolves 1. Manchester City 3, Newcastle United 1. Norwich City 1, Arsenal 2. Stoke City 2, Queen's Park Rangers 3. Sunderland 0, Fulham 0. Swansea City and Manchester United have a kick-off at 5.30. West Brom 2, Bolton Wanderers 1. And Wigan Athletic 3, Blackburn Rovers, three. In the end Power Championship, Barnsley, two. Doncaster Rovers, nil. Birmingham City, one. Peterborough United, one. Burnley, one. Leeds United, two. Coventry City, one. West Ham United, two. Derby County, nil. Hull City, two. Middlesbrough, two. Blackpool, two. Nottingham Forest, three. Ipswich Town, two. Reading, 1. Cardiff City, 2. Southampton, 3. Brighton and Hove Albion, 0. And Watford, 2. Portsmouth, 0. In the Empire League, 1. Brentford, 0. Tartan Athletic, 0 is the latest score. Colchester United, 1. Milton Keynes Dons, 5. Huddersfield Town, 2. Notts County, 1. Leighton Orient, 0. Stevenage, 0. Oldham Athletic, 5. Chesterfield, 2. Preston North End, 0. Rochdale, 1. Scunthorpe United, 0. Hartlepool United, 2. Sheffield United, 1. Carlisle United, 0. Tranmere Rovers, 1. Sheffield Wednesday, 2. Walsall, 2. Bury, 4. Wickham Wanderers, 0. AFC Bournemouth, 1. And Yeovil Town, 2. Exeter City, 2. League 2, AFC Wimbledon 1, Swindon Town 1. Aldershot Town 1, Gillingham 2. Bradford City 2, Rotherham United 3. Bristol Rovers 0, Barnet 2. Cheltenham Town 2, Port Vale 0. Crawley Town 4, Oxford United 1. Dagenham and Redbridge 2, Southend United 3. Hereford United 2, Burton Albion 3. Macclesfield Town 1, Accrington Stanley 1, Morecambe 1, Crew Alexandra 2, Northampton Town 2, Shrewsbury Town 7, Torquay United 3, Plymouth Argyle 1. In the Blue Square Premier, AFC Telford United 0, Mansfield Town 0, Alfreton Town 1, Gateshead 1, Barrow 0, York City 0. Braintree Town 1, 
Forest Green Rovers, five. Cambridge United, one. Luton, one. Ebbsfleet United, one. Darlington, three. Fleetwood Town and Stockport County have an evening kickoff. Grimsby Town, two. Newport County, two. Hayes and Yetting United, one. Kidderminster, three. Southport, two. Bath City, one. And Wrexham, two. Lincoln City, nil. In the Clyde Sturbank Scottish Premier League, Aberdeen, one. Motherwell, two. Dundee United, one. Hearts, nil. Hibernian, one. Kilmarnock, one. Emmerdale's Caledonian Thistle, nil. Celtic, two. Rangers, nil. St Johnston, nil. And St Mirren, two. Dunfermline, one. In the Scottish Cup third round, Airdrie United, 11. Gala Ferry Dean, nil. Auchinleck, three. Vale of Leafen, one. Air United, two. Montrose, two. Bowness United, nil. Cowden Beath, three. Brecon City, three. Dumbarton, nil. Coulter, one. Partick Thistle, one. East Fife, five. East Stirlingshire, nil. Elgin City, one. Queen's Park, one. Greenock Morton, five. Deveron Vale, one. Inverurie Locos, two. Peterhead, four. Irvin Meadow, nil. Livingston, six. And Keith, nil. Arbroath, one. And continuing the Scottish Cup results, third round, Ross County, four. Albion Rovers, nil. Stenhouse Muir, four. Allen Athletic, nil. Stirling Albion, one. Dundee, two. Stranraer, one. Four for Athletic, one. The Corvette Sports World Premier, Bangor City, four. Carmarthen Town, nil. And Prestatin Town, one. Portova Town, nil. Carling Premiership, Ballymena United, three. Cliftonville, seven. Crusaders, one. Lisbon Distillery, one. Donegal Celtic, one. Linfield, five. Dungannon Swifts, nil. Portadown, three. Glentoran, two. Glenavon, nil. I've left the studio to sit next to you. I feel as I, I can't call you Tim Orgudges. I feel as I should say Mr Gudgeon, really. <laughs> oh, sir, did really. You, did you find that all the tone and the intonation came naturally when you first started? No, not when I first started. I was following... Have you heard of a chap called John Webster? No. Oh, well, you ought to listen to him one day, because <laughs> he was the chap who used to read all the spo sports results when Eamon Andrews was doing right. a sports report. And think how many years ago yeah, that yeah, is. Yeah, an but, awful, an awful long time. But he, he mastered it so completely, and I thought that's the way to do it, and I've tried to emulate him ever since. So. We've had rugby, we've had horse racing, we've had football. I want you to take a look at the monitor that's in front of you, because hopefully you will enjoy this. As they say on the X Factor, oh, here are your this? best bits. Oh. <laughs> Well, now a roundup of the latest racing results. First number 35, Valroris Pie, 50 to 1. Second number 4, Painter's Silk, 7 to 1. Third number 29, Hot Rations, 100 to 7. 38, Foynaven, ridden by John Buckingham. Foynaven wins the national. South Wales Police, 14. Pontypridd, 13. Vale of Loon, 6. Liverpool, 9. And now question time. The inevitable consequence of this is a rapid rise well, in price. If I may interrupt you, all three have been talking on long-term issues, but this is a very pressing problem. Here at the United Austrian Iron and Steel Works, only another hour and 15 minutes before the night shift takes over. Welcome to this, the second semi-final in the 1986 series of Top of the Fall. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BBC Television Sports Review of the Year. Tim Gudgeon is the voice of the results and for today, briefly at least, the face of the results as well. <laughs> You've been doing it a few years now. Yeah, we're trying to work out how many. I think it's about 1965 or 6 that I came in, but I've only been doing the football, of course, in the last three years. Meadowbank Thistle, nil. Queen of the South, nil. Let's get confirmation of the Premier League results now with Tim Gudgeon. East Drive, four. Four for Athletic, three. Middlesbrough, eight. Manchester City, one. Let's get the classified results with Tim Gudgeon. Tottenham Hotspur, six, Reading, four. Time now for the classified results from Tim Gudgeon. Blackburn Rovers, seven, Nottingham Forest, nil. Time for the final scores read as ever by Tim Gudgeon. 
And opening with the Barclays Premiership, Aston Villa and West Bromwich Albion. Match postponed because they're playing tomorrow and uh, the pools panel said away, a home win. Uh, sorry, no score draw. That's a fine start. But in all the footage, Tim, that was the only thing they could find that was slightly <laughs> less than perfect. <laughs> Out of all, all the years, six decades at the BBC, question time, all the sport, do you have a highlight? Well, no, it's very... Out of so many things, you know, it's very difficult to remember a highlight, quite honestly. No, I can't, to be honest. No. It's amazing to look back at all of that, absolutely, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And yet it seems to have flown by, you know, 60 years, I can't believe it. Amazing. And you may be retired, but you have a very busy three months or so ahead. Ah, oh, yes, in Australia. Going down under for yeah. a special family event? Uh, yes, my eldest granddaughter's getting married in Perth. Lovely. Well, Margaret River, actually, if you know Western right. Australia. You enjoy your retirement. Thank you very much, for, on behalf of it's every football fan, for being a part of our lives for so many years. It's been terrific, You're Mark. a true star. Thank you very much. Not enjoy your retirement. I will try, and I shall be watching when I come back from Oz. Good. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> a hard act to follow. Tim Gudgeon there. We move on to Roberto Mancini. Manchester City beat Newcastle 3-1 this afternoon, and he's been talking to Jonathan Pearce. Roberto, some of your players have travelled thousands and thousands of miles this week for international football. So after the break, how important was it to get this win? No, it was really important because this is the problem after the international break that you can't have your players for two weeks. And a lot of these players were arrived 24 hours ago. And also we know that it was a, was a difficult game because Newcastle this year played very well. You weren't perhaps as brilliant as you have been this season, but kept possession well at key times as well and took your chances? Yeah, but uh, I think that uh, we started very well this season. We played football very well. We scored a goal, but we also know that the season is, uh, will be very long and very hard. And now we play every three days. This is, could be a problem. No team has ever won 11 of its opening 12 games in the Premier League. You've created history today. OK. <laughs> it's important that we continue to do this now. Because uh, if when you play every three days, uh, there will be the moment that you lose one game. And, and you said in the build-up to this game about Michael Richards using his head, keeping his concentration all the way through a game. He was outstanding today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if Mika is... Uh, this player he can play in national team, he can play in, in, every, in every club. Uh, and I want that uh, he use uh, a good attitude that he has, his strength, uh, every, every game. But he's young. For, for this reason, I think that he can improve a lot. Right then, that was a, a very humbling five or ten minutes. Let's uh, take a look at the tables after all the football this afternoon. Manchester City's advantage at the summit is now eight points after they handed a first league defeat of the season to third place Newcastle. However, Manchester United can get the gap back to five if they win at Swansea in the tea time kickoff. Arsenal's win at Norwich puts them above Liverpool. Uh, they're in action, of course, tomorrow at Chelsea. Wigan and Blackburn drew with each other, so stay in deep trouble as a result. Wigan five from safety, Blackburn four. Bolton stay in the bottom three following a ninth defeat of the season. Everton are the big movers, up five to 12 after seeing off Wolves. Southampton stay five clear at the top after beating South Coast rivals Brighton in the championship. West Ham came from behind to beat Coventry and keep up the chase on the leaders. Third place Middlesbrough lost ground on the top two. They could only draw today against Blackpool. They're now a point clear of Cardiff. Leeds are back in the playoff places after their lunchtime win at Burnley. And that defeat for Burnley sees them sit three places towards the drop zone. Doncaster and Coventry both lost, so are still propping up the table. Bristol City can put real daylight between themselves and the bottom two with a win at Millwall tomorrow. And there had to be at least one late kickoff on Tim's final day, didn't there? And it came in Empower League One, where Bradley Wright Phillips' 14th of the season meant that Charlton won at Griffin Park against Brentford by a goal to nil. 
So, it's as you were after the top five all won in Empower lead one. Charlton, five clear of unbeaten Huddersfield. Then come Sheffield Wednesday and the MK Dons and Sheffield United. Sixth place, Notts County, were beaten today at Huddersfield. So, the six clubs below are, are now all within three points of the final playoff place. Bad day at the office for Chessfield, who not only slipped to a 5-2 defeat, but also to the foot of the table. That heavy defeat sees them fall below Wickham on goal difference. Yeovil are up two after drawing at home with Exeter. Rochdale won at Preston to climb out of the relegation places at the expense of Walsall. In League Two, the top four all won today, so there's no change among the leaders. South End are two clear of second place Crawley, who got back to winning ways against Oxford. Cheltenham a third. Shrewsbury stay fourth after their massive win at Northampton. Burton move up into the playoff places after their win at Hereford. Defeat number 13 in the season for Plymouth leaves them marooned at the foot of the table. Barnet were in luck with a win at Bristol Rovers, so that lifts them out of the relegation zone. Dagenham and Redbridge take their place. Bradford also slip a place after losing at home to Rotherham. Wrexham's 13th win of the season means they move three points clear of Fleetwood, who play Stockport in the evening kickoff in the Blue Square Bet Premier. Southport move up to third. At the bottom, another defeat for Bath means they're now three points adrift. Hayes and Yedding, Newport and Alfreton, the other teams in the danger zone. In the SPL, Leaders Rangers were held at home by St Johnston today, which has allowed Celtic to cut the gap to ten points with a game in hand. Third place, Motherwell also kept up the chase with a win. They trail Celtic only on goal difference. The bottom three all lost, so Inverness stay rooted to the foot of the table. Level on points with Aberdeen, a point behind Dunfermline. All the goals, all the incidents, and there are an awful lot of them. Match of the day tonight, 10.20pm on BBC One with Gary. And then straight after it, all the Football League action at 11 45 on BBC One. And match of the day two tomorrow, we'll have all the goals and all the action from Chelsea against Liverpool. Colin on air on BBC Two from 10 o'clock. And despite Manchester City's win and Newcastle losing their unbeaten record at the Etihad, a lot of attention on match of the day tonight will be on Wigan against Blackburn. I haven't seen a game like it all season, I haven't seen a game like it for years. Um, Goals galore, sendings off, reckless play. And Paul Robinson at the end is the villain and is the hero. What he does in the last, what, two minutes of the game is just extraordinary. Gashes his head in the, in, in the process. But it's extraordinary circumstances. You have, to, you have to feel sorry, though, for Wigan because they could have got off the bottom of the table this morning, uh, from this morning's tables. Desperately unlucky. I feel they've really, the referee should be able to see this. Andre Mariner has missed it. They've taken a corner, which never was. They've gone on and scored from it, and really, Wigan have been robbed. Blackburn down to ten men, and still managing to get something out of the game. Quite incredible. See, Martin says that, but I've looked at this replay time and time again. You can't be sure whether Yakubu's touched the ball or not. He hasn't he, touched it. He makes he, it as he's touched it. He looks he, he, like he's touched it. There's only Garth the thing he clicked. touched it. No, I'm not saying he has. I'm saying, but when you look at the video and you look at the clip, you think... Has he touched it or has he not? You're unsure. I think he dummies so can, to play it. And Pedersen takes advantage of that. Whether the referee should have seen it or not, you perhaps might say, yes, it's easy for us, but it's very difficult when you see what happens in real time. And, and it kind of leaves you none the wiser about both teams, doesn't it? Well, I mean... You, you or do you fear at, for them both? Well, very much so. They've, they've, only had, there's only one, they've only had one win between them, really, this, since the season started. So, you know, I, I imagine they're both going to go down. But, you know, if you can win today you can start to turn it around a little bit. And I feel Wigan have been denied that opportunity. And a, a big result, just something to with one of your former clubs, Everton. There were protests before the game about the ownership of the club, mm. but they got a big win against Wolves. They're yeah. up five places, they're 12. Quickly. Yeah, Leighton Baines scoring the winning goal for them, great in midweek, and, and the same again today. So, a good win for them. Everton. And the Manchester City bandwagon rolls on? And the Manchester City bandwagon rolls on. Eight points clear as we stand. United have got to win today. That's it. We'll keep you up to date with United on the red button. Plus, you'll be able to hear from the Wigan manager, Roberto Martinez. So press red now to stay with us on final score. Thank you very much to Tim Gudgeon. It's been a pleasure working with him. Bye-bye.